Hi, this is Dr. Jose Saldivar with another episode of the Way to College podcast. Um, joining me today is um, this young man was uh, one of my former students um, at the university. And, um, you know, I, I, I was eager to have him because have him on the podcast because because I think he's got an interesting journey. He's, you know, he's, I think he's a little younger than some of our other guests, but I think his story is incredibly um when, how would I describe it? In, um, I think I think there's much to learn from from his story, um, and I'm eager to to dive in and and to have him share it with us. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him and let him introduce himself. So, Fernando, why don't you introduce yourself to our audience? Right. Well, hello, guys. My name is Fernando Sanchez. I am a 25 year old uh, guy <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that well, I mean, you know. That is trying to figure life out every single every single day, pretty much, you know. All right, so I think he's being a little humble. Um, just to give you some context, so Fernando, like I said, was one of my students, and and shame on me, I forget what his major was, but I remember what was it? It changed. At first, was in your class, it was uh, computer science, uh, and then it changed it to marketing advertising. So. Okay. So, Fernando, I ask all my quest, my guests, um, if you had to go back to a point in your life where you could say, my educational journey started here, where would that point be for you? My educational journey? That's a really good question. Um, honestly, probably since the beginning of high school, you know, just uh, that's when I really started, like, learning about different uh, stuff. I when I was in high school, I was really eager to like go to a big college, you know, because my parents moved here. Um, they had my mom didn't finish college, but my dad did. But like in Mexico and here, it, it, his degree wasn't valid, so I would have I would have been a first uh, first year like college student, and I'm the oldest of my brother and my sister, so I, I felt like this big responsibility towards like my my siblings and my parents to make them proud and you know just work as hard as I could and I always believed like I could have been destined to I could be destined still do like to great things so uh I always was hard on myself and I always believed like oh I'm I'm going to like Harvard or like at least Texas A&M or UT um and like so I I always put that pressure on me to do as well as I could in school but balancing that and also being social was really hard. <laughs> and that kind of took a toll. I'm not going to lie. Like, uh, you know, from playing sports, trying to have a social life and do homework all the time, it was, it was hard. And uh, interestingly enough, putting all that pressure on me in high school kind of prepared me for college, for the workload that college gave me. So I was kind of already used to it since I started taking college classes in high school. So. Uh, so I would say since the beginning of high school, I really started taking educational learning seriously, but it wasn't until uh, after college that I really started getting hands-on experience in the real world. And that's like, like, you know, learning something from a classroom is different perspective than like actually living it, you know? So, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad you framed it that way. Um, because I think um, when I started the podcast, some of it was because I think students have this expectation, like, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to graduate, and the job's going to be there, going to be waiting for me. Um, you know, and when I was 18, 19, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how I was going to get there, and I felt like I needed experience. I needed it to kind of experience life a little bit to figure out, like, what is it that I wanted to do? And so... You said you started out as computer science, changed to marketing, and I reconnected with you because I, I, we had put out a call, right, for auditions for a, for a short that we were filming, me and a couple of buddies, and, and you showed up. And I remembered, and, and I, I hadn't even seen you yet. I was reading your the, the your bio, and I thought, I think this guy was my student. <laughs> and so you walk in, and I was like, yeah, I remember this guy. Um, and so... So, Ronaldo, tell me about, like, even just in, in college, going computer science, marketing, like, what happened there? Because, I mean, the, the, they seem like t- 
two very different paths. So what happened there? Actually a funny story, but uh, if we go back, you know, I was blessed to know what I really wanted to do since I was a kid. It's just that what I really wanted to do doesn't have a definite path. So it's really hard to like know what to do, especially if your parents don't speak English and you're in a country where you're like, I'm experiencing everything myself since I was like the oldest. Like, you know, so um, what I really wanted to do is I wanted to be an actor ever since I was a kid. Oh, that was my main dream, my main thing. But uh, growing up, my parents always like, so when I was young, now that it's different, but when I was young, they would always be like, have a backup plan, you know, get a college degree at least, and then go pursue your dreams. So that was always in the back of my head. But as I grew older, I started, like the whole acting thing never, like never left. I still want to be an actor, but, but growing up, I really started falling in love with like learning, and, like, you know, the whole, just, you know, like the whole business, like business, I found I love with business. So that's why I kept going to school, you know, that's why, I, after high school, I wanted to like leave to LA and just pursue acting 100. percent But then I started figuring like there are people who do have a college degree and still are young enough to go and pursue acting. So I was like, mm, maybe I could do that. You know? uh, so what happened was I've always been like big also on computers, but I never took, or at least my school didn't offer like coding classes in co- high school. So when I entered into UTRGV, even though I was fascinated by computers and learning how they work, I was like behind because everybody in that degree in those classes were already coding multiplayer games. So, and I had no idea how to code yet. So uh, interestingly enough, I walked into one of my um, advisors for that degree and to ask him what classes I should take my sophomore year. And he advised me, if you don't start studying every single day from the summer until the semester starts, you're not going to make it. And that's when I decided like, okay, I need to switch my career. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I need to get a career that I like so I can finish as fast as possible and move to LA so I can pursue acting ASAP. So then I thought, what's closer than that than advertising and marketing, you know? Because as an actor, you have to market yourself. So I thought that was the next big best option. Uh, interest, interestingly enough, I fell in love with marketing, so I thought I picked the right career. Um, but you see, I never knew what I what I wanted. I just kept trying to pick different things until like I landed on what I liked, and that's something that I learned through time. But also, like if you know um, Gary V, he mentioned I saw a video where he said he told another 25 year old because uh he said um because the 25 year old told him like hey man i don't know what i want to do uh is that a bad thing and gary's like no like you're still young Let's take the next five years do something for six months and then try something else for six months and then try something else for six months and by the time you're like 30 you already tried all these different things and you're still young and you can still do what you want like what you found that you like you know um and i always thought you know growing up especially like the younger generations like we have this pressure because of social media to like do something now, like be someone now, uh, have six financial success now, uh, fight, fight, uh, career, be like successful in the career of your, that you want now, know what you want now, have everything together now, because we see like the highlights of everyone on social media. I myself have did that in the past. And so <laughs> I made myself look like I was like traveling, doing all these things. When in reality, I was like behind the scenes struggling, trying to figure out how to raise enough money to take a flight to LA and back. And I was like 17, 18, like, I don't know. And like, it was just a highlight reel. And people were like, oh my God, you're doing all these things. But that's what my Instagram portrayed, you know? Uh, that's not really what was happening behind the doors. And that's what most people do. Like they make themselves look a lot bigger and doing a lot bigger things than it looks. So we always have that pressure of like, Oh, I need to do that too. I need to be there. But then I realized like, um, if you, you can literally change your whole life around in one year, like it doesn't have to take 20, 30 years to like change. If you really put in the time and the work, you can literally switch everything in less than like in a year or two. Like, so that's why that took off pressure from me. Like as far as like figuring stuff out and I was just like, okay, I need to relax. I need to take a step back, figure out what I want to do and just make a game plan. So 
<laughs> but so let me ask you what what was your game plan then you know you you changed majors you chose marketing you graduated right with a degree in marketing correct um so at that point you know mom and dad were okay with you pursuing acting because you had a degree yeah is that before that they told me like if you really if you really love what you like acting we totally support you which not a lot of people have that kind of support i was lucky but, like if you really want to do it do it but if you're gonna do it do it right don't like don't like do it halfway and then drop it like go all the way knock on all the doors do whatever it takes if you need to live in a one bedroom apartment or like and like eat ramen noodles every day like you got to do it you know whatever it takes uh so i started i started like trying to figure out because like you know like when you are surrounded by people that have that mentality that it's you really can't do anything that much and it's hard and it's one in a million and they have that mentality because and it's not their fault you know like they were taught that so they don't know anything else when you're taught that mentality your brain kind of just like puts you in that level and doesn't you can't really see yourself past it and when you surround yourself with around those same people you feel like oh it's kind of impossible to do but then I started meeting people that were doing it. I started meeting people that were in movies in LA. I started meeting people that were in Netflix shows. And I was just, and they were like, oh yeah. But yeah, I was in that show. They made it seem so casual. I'm like, what? Everybody back home just makes it seem so impossible. They're like, no dude. And this is what you gotta do. Boom, 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 boom. And that's it. I'm like, what? That's not easy. Obviously it's really hard, but there is a path, you know? And that's when I was like, well, I can do it too, you know? So, and then I started finding people here in the Valley that were doing even bigger things than I could ever imagine. I'm just like people I look up to now, like, I don't know if you know Raul Castillo, Mm -hmm. like he's top of the top. He's getting to that top 1% of actors. He's getting to that point. Like he just came to like a, his, his movies like has been number one that just came out called Night Teeth with Debbie Ryan, which is like a huge star. Uh, his previous movie, Army of the Dead, was number one on Netflix for a while. Uh, he did a movie with George Lo- uh, Lopez, the uh, he, Chicano. Um, he he's doing so many big things. And I'm like, dude, he's from McAllen. Like, what? And then this is other woman, her, uh, Cristel Alonso. She was the voice of Car, uh, Car and Cars 3. She uh, and Now she's hosting a Nickelodeon show. Uh, and it's like, dude, she's from here too. Like, what, like if they can do it, why can I, you know? So yeah. that's when I started feeling like thinking like, oh, it's possible. Fernando, let me ask you, oh, how, how did you, how did you not give up on that dream, that dream of becoming an actor? Like you said, you were surrounded by a lot of negative people early on. And, and then obviously you're going through school, but you said you never, you never lost sight of that. You know, I think, I think a lot of people, young people, you know, I, just in my profession, I write, meet students and like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. Most of them change their mind. A, a lot of them even, you know, na- you know we, I spend more time now, I think, talking about kids like, what did you want to be? What did you always want to be when you were younger? And and they've, they've moved on from that. And it's not like that they can't do it, right? Veterinarian or whatever it is, right? But a lot of them have given up on that and, and they're like, I need to find something more, quote unquote, realistic. How did you, how did you keep your dream alive? Uh, I think I, I would get lost in the whole like business world from time to time, and I would totally lose track of that vision that I always had. And then uh, all it took was like somebody telling me, "Hey, you're a good actor," to like spark that back up, and I'm like, "Oh man, I am. What am I doing? You know, like why am I not doing that?" Like so. Uh, during the pandemic was really whenever I dived down and like try to figure out how to make it happen. So during the pandemic, since there was like a lot of downtime and staying inside, um, I ended up researching a lot like of different casting directors, actors, um, all kinds of people through my connections, people that I've met. And uh, I started going, I started attending online seminars and, and started watching live like, on Instagram. Cause a lot of these, uh, 
like directors, casting directors, since the production sets were all closed because of COVID, they started going live a lot. And so I started watching all their lives and started learning what they were looking for. I started researching different agencies. Um, and I really like learned like a, like a way to get into the industry. So back in, um, and also like back in 2019, I had found through research an agency that was taking extras for different big films and stuff like that. And uh, I ended up signing up to be in as an extra in a movie for Netflix. And uh, I didn't really know much about it, but they told me like, they, I got a phone call. They told me, hey, you're, congratulations, you're going to be an extra in this movie. And I'm like, all right, cool. I, I mean, I was excited, but I was you know, just an extra. I just really wanted to be on set so bad. Like, I just wanted to see how it worked, you know? So I, I took the last money that I had left in my bank account, and I, uh, I flew by myself to Atlanta. By myself, like, I got, like, a small Airbnb in a house with, that I had to share with people. And I went there for only for a weekend. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was really scary because I was by myself in a, in a whole new city, a whole new, like, state that I've never been to before. But it was a lot of fun. And then finally I got to be on set. And then I got lucky because even though there was like more than 300 extras, uh, Ben Falcon, which is Melissa McCarthy's husband who was directing the film, which the movie is called Thunder Force, he came up to me. He's like, hey, do you want to be a part of the film? And I was like, what? And he's like, me? Like out of everyone? He's like, yeah, do you want to be like a, a, transition, a transitioning shot? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So he put like a big camera on a big crane on me. And it's like we shot it like five, six times. He told me, look at the camera this way. This is your big moment. And I, I don't know, it just, it all came down to luck at that moment. So, yeah. And then finally I came back, flew back. Um, and like, they told me, congratulations, you're going to be in the movie. But I couldn't be certain because a lot of times you can, you can get cut during like the editing process. So I didn't think much of it. When it was finally released a whole, like almost a year later, um, I saw that I came out and I was freaking out. So <laughs> people started texting. I forgot to tell a lot of people. So like people were like, dude, is that you? Like, in the, cause it was number one on Netflix and uh, people started seeing me like, dude, I could swear this is you, this is you. And I started getting a lot of messages and it, it was, it was like a little taste of like that, what I've always wanted to do, you know, a little. Yeah. yeah so from there, I, uh, I met a lot of people there in Atlanta that are living in Atlanta in Atlanta and there a lot of them are in, like on different Netflix shows and um and they told me hey man if you ever come to Atlanta you're you'll be a big fish in a small pond because now they started filming a lot more stuff in Atlanta than in LA which is crazy and plus there's like not many there's not that much well there is a lot of competition but not for me because they don't have my demographic like as much as others in Atlanta. So I spoke to like one of the big agencies and they told me, get a little bit more experience, come move over here, get into acting classes. And when they're ready, they're going to, you can come with us. And like, that's a big agency. So I thought like, man, I have a chance, you know? So uh, I'd, I'd be lying to you if I told you I haven't figured it out right now. Cause I still don't, <laughs> it's an everyday thing. I'm always trying to figure out day to day. But at least I have a more clear plat, plat, uh, path, you know. One congratulations, because um, yeah, I remember seeing. I don't know who posted it. I, I think I want to say it was UTRGV, and I don't know if it was UTRGV Theater. Some somebody posted it, yeah. and I remember looking at it. They asked me and, for the day, and I was like, "No way!" <laughs> what? Yeah. And I saw it, and I thought, "Oh my!" Like I thought, "Oh my God!" <laughs> I said I know that I know that guy. It was another one of those I know that guy moments. <laughs> and um, and so I started to look for you on Instagram because I was like, "Okay, I want to I want to follow him. I want to keep up to date." <laughs> um, and and because because yeah, like I you know honestly, Fernando, I like I you know I follow a lot of my former students because I love I love being a part of the journey. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know about other other. I know a lot of teachers, right? You you feel you invest a little bit of time in your students, and for me, I love 
the me for me the payoff is when you all are doing what it is whatever it is that you want to do yeah. and so i take great satisfaction in that and and so i i you know i was like i want to see i want to be part just follow along in the journey and then i thought okay i, I think um you know i want to hear your story i want you to share it because i think i think like you said i I appreciate the reality of it. The you're still trying to find your path and you're still trying to figure it out. But I love that you haven't given up on it. And I think a lot of people give up on on their dreams really early and 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 a lot can happen, right? Tomorrow a lot can happen to you. Yes. But man, even getting into even getting into, you know, a Netflix movie you know, and and just having that one opportunity, because you never know where that op- that one opportunity can then springboard you to something else. Yeah. And so, when you know, I, the fact. Go, go ahead. The way I see it, or the way I started seeing it, was, uh, and, and it might it may sound like I don't know crazy, but the way I see it now is just like we're gonna die anyways. So like, <laughs> you know, if, whether you do it or you don't, you're gonna die. So might as well do it. You know, like. You're not gonna lose anything. You're gonna die. Nobody's gonna remember it a thousand years from now, anyways. You know, yeah. if you fail, like it's not gonna matter. So just try. Just keep going. Just do whatever you. And a lot of times, like I'm lazy, I'm tired. But like, once you're making it happen, it's all gonna be worth it. So, um, yeah. So it just and then um, and then fast forward a little bit. I am. Um, I ended up uh, going to Dallas for another film which that one hasn't come out yet uh, that one it was a Lionsgate movie it's called American Underdog and it's the life story of the NFL Hall of Famer quarterback uh, Kurt Warner and so I went to Dallas and I was an extra in that movie for a whole week we were filming a Super Bowl scene and I was uh, <laughs> I was a stadium security guard <laughs> but the craziest experience of my life till this day like there it was like 12 hour work days Monday through Friday uh, being on in the Dallas Cowboys Stadium just filming with them with the whole production Lionsgate production team uh, I got to meet Kurt Warner got to meet uh, Dennis Quaid I don't know if you know Dennis Quaid got to hang out with him got to meet uh, got to ha- uh, hang out and meet um the guy who plays Kurt Warner, who is the guy that plays Shazam, I forgot his name, um, and just seeing them, and then and then meeting the director, and the, they had two directors on set: the main director for the movie, and then the director that directed the football team that was playing in the film. And which is interestingly enough, it's the same football team in every football movie. It's a uh, it's an organization of like ex college football players or ex NFL players that they put a team together and every time there's an NFL movie or like a movie with a football team they always call the same team and it's always oh wow same, and it's always the same director that directs that team and that director directs all like he he directs all films with sports hockey football any any basketball he's the one that directs all those movies like just that portion of like the sports. And I thought it was so interesting. And he gave us his story. So, like, one day on set, while everybody was, like, while they were f- filming the main actor, uh, uh, Zachary Levi, that's his name. While they were filming him, I was sitting down with the director, and he was telling us his whole story of how he started, how whenever he made the movie with uh, Adam Sandler, the, the water boy, he, he told us that he thought that movie was so stupid, and then it broke, like, records. And uh, he's, he was about to quit too. Like he's like, this movie's so stupid. And then that movie just got millions and millions of views and just broke records. He's like, what? And that's what jump started his career actually. But you know, like, hearing his story, meeting like a lot of the actors, like meeting like other extras. Like, oh yeah, my son, my son is like in this agency here in Houston, and he's like on this Netflix movie. And I'm just like, what? You know, it's, it's, it doesn't seem impossible at this point. Just how bad you want it. And I guess, like, the main thing is consistency. That's it. Consistency and hard work. Like, that's, that's all you need, really. Consistency. That, oh, no, the main thing besides consistency is uh, you have to have discipline. And that's one of the biggest things I've struggled with for a long time. Discipline. Yeah, so. Consistency, discipline, hard work. Discipline and consistency. If you, if, if it's whenever you feel like not doing it, 
Yeah. Doing it anyways. Like going to the gym, like, oh, I don't feel like going to the gym today, but still going. Discipline, consistency. Every yeah. single day, that's how you see progress. And uh, just doing one little thing every single day adds up. You know, it's like adding one break every day, you're going to build a wall. Rather than trying to build a whole wall in one day, you're going to be overwhelmed. You know? And that's the way I try to take it day by day. If you think about, like, oh, what, what I have to do all this week, you're going to feel overwhelmed and just tired. But if you think, oh, I only have to do this today and that's it, and you do that every day, you're going to finish more than what you do. Uh, and it, it's easier said than done, obviously. <laughs> but I try to follow that. <laughs> I think that's sound, sound advice, right? That's solid advice. Um, so, you know, you, you've got you've got some things on the horizon. Um, I'm sure maybe some of our listeners are wondering, but Fernando, what's paying your bills right now? <laughs> so, what do you what do you do? What are you doing? Because I I know when before you jumped on, you were telling me about some of the work that you're doing now. I think you're just transitioning into into some other work. So, tell us about that work now. So, oh man, that's, that's always been like the main thing. I always wonder like, okay, this person's doing all this, but how are they surviving? Like what? Like, are they rich? Like are their parents funding all their money? Cause my parents are not rich. Like I'm paying all my stuff. That was always my biggest thing. Like how, how do you make it work? How do you pursue your dreams with no money? You know? And, uh, and interestingly enough, like nowadays it's a lot easier to make money online than it ever has been ever and uh if you really want it like you can make it happen like especially now that with all the opportunities online if you learn about crypto investing you learn about marketing nowadays marketing is huge it's like the future so like what i i've always been since since i was young i always wanted i always carried a camera with me so I learned how to do video photo and all that paid off because now I do that for clients you know I uh, I do like freelancing where I'll like I'll film wedding I'll film uh I'll film quinceañeras or I'll do commercials for different like local clients and now I've partnered up with Yao Sam to create a marketing agency and where uh, our clients are now like the Vipers via Wise the Crash Gal like uh lawyer uh um, and uh like junior speed market huge clients and so it started from the bottom from making small like videos for like a like local car dealership to like now make multi-dollar like productions for big companies so like it's just small steps and that's what i do now and, like i guess what my plan is now is like i don't know yet what my plan is but i kind of want to like We want to take Grand Genius to like Austin and San Antonio, open up like in those cities. And I was planning on maybe moving to Austin with Yao Sam, working on Grand Genius over there, expanding. And while I'm doing that, um, going on auditions, getting an agent, and start auditioning for Netflix shows, Amazon Prime shows, um, movies, and stuff like that, and see what happens from there. Wow. But I'm also interested in the business world. So trying to take advantage of the whole metaverse that's going on with Facebook, um, building digital products, NFTs, crypto, investing in crypto. Just uh, right now is the best time to like, you can really be a millionaire if you really try, you know? It's, we all have the tools now. So if you don't, it's because you don't, you don't want it. Like there's a way, you know, there's a path. Yeah. YouTube and Google is all you need. So, <laughs> I don't know. Wow. Anyway. You've come a long way from that from that first year class. <laughs> For sure. I remember um I do remember you in class because I remember you did you asked a lot of questions. There was a there was another student in class. I don't I forget his name, but I I I remember he was always also hustling and and had a bunch of business ideas and um he talked about a vision board and and so since then I use a vision board in my class now and in fact we we talked about it in class this week but 
you know, um, I remember you ask, always asking a lot of questions. You were just really inquisitive. And it was like you were just want, always like like this sponge. And like you would ask, you know, hey, what? how do you do that? What do you? And it just seemed like you just wanted to soak up as much knowledge. And so to see you and really taking that and still living that. It sounds like you're still living that, still trying to learn as much as you can. But also having your hands in all of these different things. Um it, it's it you know it seems like that's what you're doing you're you're still you're still you know at 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 your core you're still that same person but now you're trying to apply a lot of what you're learning to a lot of these different markets a lot of these different right industries um you know fernando as we close cuz right you you're just starting out it feels like right a lot of paths way op- open for you yeah um fingers crossed right i'll i'll light a vela for you uh, but well, tune in for the next chapter. <laughs> See what yeah, but I, I, I think like even so, like you know, all of twenty five, and here you are. You, you, you know. Hopefully, in this next, you know, be in another movie, right? Looking at, you know, potential more opportunities to continue acting, but also it, it looks like you're also not waiting for things to happen to you. You're trying to make things happen, right? You're taking control of of what it is, and and whether it's the marketing or the online stuff. I I um I think that says a lot about you, right? And like you said, discipline, hard work, consistency, right? You know, uh- it's, I learned that the hard way though like I like the whole like not waiting for it to happen for some reason I thought like oh one day I'll be discovered it's fine I'll wait no you gotta go out there and get it you know nobody's gonna give it to you but like everybody says uh, it's a cliche saying but it's to actually grasp it and understand it it's different than to listen to it acknowledge it it's you have to actually have to believe that you have to like go out there and get it and that all happened to me back in 2016, whenever I uh, I was a sophomore. I think it was like the year after I took your class. That's when everything really like gave me a different perspective because that year I uh, had auditioned for a singing competition in Miami called, um, what was the show called? It was called um, La Banda. So it was basically like American Idol or um, that were like the voice of the Latin people in the USA. It was a new show that Ricky Martin put out with Simon Cowell. And uh, and the first, yeah, in the first season like that came out, it was so successful. It got like five like guys, young guys, and it made them into a band called CNCO, and they're still huge right now. They have huge hits. And so I was like, I gotta go for the second season. So I sent in a video audition of me singing a song. I get a call one day while I'm in campus, and it's this lady from Miami speaking to me in um, a Cuban accent or Puerto Rican accent, and she's like, "Hey, uh, you've been selected to uh, like jump like all the auditions in the beginning. Go straight to the producers. If they like you, you'll be on the show." I was like, "There's no way!" Like, so that was like one of my first moment of like, "Oh, I can actually do something out like that, like you know, something big." You know? So. Finally, I went in and I that's where I met this one guy named Jose Tunin. He's a good friend of mine now. And he was on the first season of the show and he made it to the semifinals. So I was a big fan of his because I watched the whole first season. And, uh, and he was re-auditioning for the second season. And he had a following because he was like, I just came out from the first season, it was pretty popular. So I remember they put me in this room with like a bunch of the guys that were in the first season that were re-auditioning and a bunch of new people. And I was like, this is crazy, you know? Became friends with him. I ended up not making the show because I had to wait a whole six months to find out if I made it or not. It was worth six months ever. But I did not make it, unfortunately, but I became really good friends with this guy and he was living in San Antonio at the time. So I would travel by myself. I didn't have a car at that time, so I would travel by myself on the bus all the time to San Antonio back because he would, since he was my friend, he would have me open up for him. And he was opening up for like an artist and then I was opening up for him. He gave me opportunities. And uh, I was always grateful for that. And then one day he got this guy who asked, who wanted to be his manager and manage him as a musician all the way from California. And I was 20. And he was like 16, so his mom was like, there's no way you're going alone. Have Fernando go with you. Convince your manager to take you, to take him as well. And it was during the summer, and so he was like, fine. He told me, if you can help me translate 
like this whole documents for like a lawyer or something into Sp like from Eng English to Spanish, then you can live with me for free in my in my house. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So, so it turns out he was like it's like this rich man, huge. Well, his parents, they live huge mansion in the hills in San Diego, and I stayed in his pool house with Jose Tunin. I was like, what is going on? Like this is insane. I had no money, you know. Like I just it was an opportunity. So I went and, um, and we were in LA. We were only supposed to be there for a week, but we ended up staying there for like two months. <laughs> so what happened was he was taking us, he had all these connections. He was taking us to red carpet events. He was taking us to, uh, we got signed. He got, he was helping me out too. Cause he knew I wanted to be a singer. So we, we both got signed to uh, a shoe company called Bellato. We got signed to that shoe company. So free shoes, free, like 80, $90 shoes, as many as we wanted. And from there, um, we went to like, like, uh, red carpet events, parties for different like companies that they were holding out where they had like celebrities there. Uh, I ended up partying with big YouTubers named like Logan Paul, Jake Paul. I don't know if you've heard of them, partied with them, met some other people that worked for the Grammys and the Oscars who were giving me opportunities left and right. It's this big ball of like, it's, and honestly, it's like who, you know, which is crazy because if you know people, you can make it really far. So like just knowing these people, they started getting me like, I started being like music videos for some artists. Uh, I met this girl who I'm really grateful for. And she's still a really good friend of mine. Her name is Giselle. She worked for campaigns for Ariana Grande, Justin Bieber. And it's just crazy how like the, just the ball kept rolling. And we started partying with like social media influencers. Um, and from there, I got an opportunity to sing in Hollywood for like thousands of people. And I opened up for some artists, uh, which was insane. And I ended up becoming friends with actors that I saw on Nickelodeon when I was a kid, they still follow me on Instagram. We're still friends. And it was just, it, it was just like, I couldn't believe it. So like the summer ended, came back. Cause I had to go back to school and then everything, all the, all the hype just died down. Like I just spent the best summer of my life doing red carpet events, uh, hanging out with Grammy award-winning artists, recording in studios where they recorded all the Disney channel movie soundtracks, all the, where they recorded Hannah Montana, where they recorded Ariana Grande, where they recorded hanging out with those artists, doing all that. And then coming back to school in McAllen, I'm just like, bro. <laughs> and then it all died down from there. And, uh, well, like the hype and, and that was my first taste of like, if you take one step, had I never sent in that one video audition, I would have never met Jose Tunin. I would have never been flown to live in a pool house in San Diego. I would have never met all these artists, party with YouTubers, did all that just from one decision. So from then on, I decided like, take every opportunity because you don't know where it's going to lead you to. You know what I mean? And that's in using that same principle is how I got on Netflix using that same principle is how I met Kurt Warner and was in his movie. And it's the same principle I'm trying to still do where it takes you places, you know, don't be afraid to take a step. Cause next thing you know, you're doing something you've always wanted to do. Uh, Cause you always hear like people who are successful be like, if you would have asked me five years ago, 10 years ago, that I would have been doing this right now, I would have not believed you. And it's true because you don't expect it. But once you take that one step, it takes you to another step, which takes you and it's just a ball that rolls. And it's just like, you start getting momentum. Next thing you know, you're doing this and you're like, what? <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. So that's what I'm still trying to do. It's just like a, a friendly reminder for myself, I guess, <laughs> to not be afraid and do those things. So oh, man, the last example for that actually was I was working for Bredogden that's when I felt complacent. I've been there for two years doing the same thing over and over being comfortable. And I learned if you're comfortable, you're not growing, you're not, uh, you're not, uh, not opening up new doors. You're just doing the same thing. It's reading the same book, expecting a different ending. That's why I was like, I need to switch it up. I need to do something different. That's why I quit. And I jumped on board from brand genius and as scary as it was, I knew that's what I needed to do to move forward. You know? Wow, man, that's those are some crazy stories. <laughs> but I, 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 um, yeah, go ahead. I don't believe in myself. Yeah, it's just, and and it's you know, and it's funny because a lot of the times I forget that I did all those things, and I'm hard on myself, and I'm just like, what am I doing? Like, I feel like I haven't accomplished anything, and then I look back, and I'm like, 
dang, like, yeah, I, I need to be doing those things again. <laughs> yeah. Fernando, um, wow. I think, um, you know, I usually ask my guests for uh, last pieces of advice or final words as we to close this out, but I think, and I apologize for my dog barking in the background, <laughs> but. I, I, I don't think I don't think I could, you could have scripted that any better, right? That that last bit that you talked about, right? And taking that step and and not not being comfortable, right? Forcing ourselves, right? Because when you're comfortable, you're not doing anything. And so I can't I can't think of a better way to end this episode of the podcast. So man, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your story, for being so transparent and so real about your experiences, right? But also so real about kind of the the uncertainty, right? You still don't know where your path is going to lead you. Yeah. I'm trying to, and I think that's what makes life interesting. You know, like, how boring would it be if you already knew what you were doing? Like, it would be so boring. I, I find so much, um, like, I don't know, I'm so much interest in being scared. Like, and and because uh, that makes life more interesting and more fun. And uh, obviously, it's, it's easier for me to say since I don't have kids or like a wife. So, like, if I lose, I lose myself and I'm not putting anybody in. <laughs> it would be different if I had to, like, people depended on me, you know, so that's why I'm trying to take advantage now, while I still can, but it, that's not to say that you can always do it whenever, you know, like, you can always, like, I know actors that are, like, in their 60s, 70s, and, uh, and, and, they're making, and they're making a name for themselves in the acting industry, like, you're never too old to do what you want, and yeah, so... That's why I used to be afraid of time and like how, like, oh, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. It's too late. No, I don't see it that way anymore. I see it as like, uh, you, you can do whatever you want. You know, you can always change your life around. I've seen people go from nothing to like this huge thing in a year. Like there was this YouTuber, that's the last, last note. Like I, there's this YouTuber named Eric Deckman. He, uh, he started YouTube a year and a half ago with no subscribers, had no money, he was depressed. He was, he didn't know what he wanted to do. He's like, you know what? I've always wanted to be a YouTuber. I'm going to go all out, all out. And in one year, he got a million followers on YouTube. He hangs out with the biggest YouTubers um, ever. And he's collaborated with the biggest YouTubers. He's making hundreds of thousands of dollars doing YouTube. He's doing crazy things in one year and a half. Like, so what's to say you can't, change your whole life around in a year, you know, if you really want to, that's the motivation that I, that I need that a year from now, I could be doing something completely different, you know? So that's pretty much it. <laughs> Fernando, thank you. Thank you for your story. Thank you for all of the valuable pieces of advice. Um, this concludes another episode of the Way to College podcast. Thank you to my uh, my guest, Fernando Sanchez. Thank you to all of you, our listeners out there and viewers. Um, tune in next time for another episode. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>